What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Derek Hamilwood, and in this video, we will be covering Chapter 8, Section 2, Creating a Simple Climate Model. Uh, now, you may want to pay attention because this topic has not been on the IB exam in the past couple of years, so odds are it's going to be on there this year. So let's hope I do a good job. Okay, in this video, we will be covering a tutorial on how to create a very simplified, very simple, some simplified climate model using an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, something that we have learned in our hands-on projects in the past. Uh, background info. The er uh, just this is just something you're going to have to understand if you want to understand how the climate model works. Uh, it's it's just a very basic uh, like climate info and whatnot. The Earth receives energy from the sun, approximately 352 watts per square meter. About 25 percent of this is reflected back by the clouds, and about the same amount is absorbed by the atmosphere. The remaining 50 percent hits the Earth's surface, warming it. If the Earth had no atmosphere, this, this heat would simply re-radiate back into space. Because of it, only 3% escapes back into space. Um, <clears throat> greenhouse gases absorb the rest, which 42% which still escape, but the remainder is reflected back down towards the Earth's surface. This is commonly known as the greenhouse effect. <clears throat> uh, now you may be wondering about, about the greenhouse effect, because a lot of people disparage it and they say that you know, it's 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 terrible and it's it's awful and it's the reason for global warming, and they're partly right. But if we didn't have it at all, then we would all freeze to death because we wouldn't have an atmosphere, and none of the heat would reach us, and we would all starve as well as freeze. So that would be bad. Um, this is a simple diagram ripped from the book, and it's a simple representation of the greenhouse effect, and it shows all the percentages I showed earlier. And personally, I think it looks terrible and it's really hard to understand so I actually <clears throat> ripped another one off offline so this is a more complex one it, it has all the arrows and, and absorbed radiation and reflected radiation and all that uh, more of a scientific diagram now this is a very simple one which I found which um, kind of directly explains it and, you know some sunlight that hits the earth becomes reflected some becomes heat CO2 and other gases keep it in the atmosphere to the form so you know Really basic stuff here, and when you really think about it. Okay, background info. Background info continued. The amount of heat re-radiated by the Earth through the greenhouse effect can be calculated calculated using the Stefan Boltzmann constant. I'm sorry, I forgot a hyphen. Though. That's actually two names, which is 5.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 8. The calculation itself is s s t to the to the fourth, where s is the constant and t is the current temperature. Um, the temperature change over a given time period is the following. Energy in minus energy out times time in seconds over the Earth's heat capacity. Uh, the model. The model is a fairly simple one and can be into, input into a spreadsheet without significant difficulty. Each row of the spreadsheet should represent a given period of time, uh, generally from a six-month to a one-year period working the best. It is, it is best to split the spreadsheet into two halves horizontally, using the left side to calculate energy received minus the losses to space and clouds, and the right side to calculate the amount of re-radiated radiation, uh, modeling the loss of radiation returning to Earth, and to calculate the actual temperature change. Uh, this picture is a rough look at how the climate model should appear when complete. Uh, I realize it's not the greatest quality, and it's kind of hard to get the point across, but you, you understand that um, you get the point. It's, it's a lot of these models can be put, put into spreadsheets, but the more complex ones cannot. Uh, one of the things that may be confusing about the diagram is the fact that the temperature is in the 200s and 300s, which um, is actually in, it's measured in Kelvin, so you have to subtract uh, some number, it's in the, it's in the 200s to uh, get it back to Celsius, so that's just one thing I want to clear about the model. Accuracy. The values represented in this model are largely approximate and can't be relied on exactly. In many textbooks or other official resources, you may find different values. This is because these temperatures vary depending on your location. Changing values, such as the cloud levels and how much radiation is reflected off of them, will change the output data as is appropriate from this type. Okay, so just to kind of give you guys more of what these models might look like, um, this is a more complex one for a global atmosphere. And as you can see, the uh, atmosphere is cordoned off into blocks, and then uh, obviously more measurements are taken and more input data is put in in order to find some actual qualities about those blocks of atmosphere. 
but as you can see, this is probably in a much more complex program, and there are a lot more uh, variables to worry about, so it's obviously a very, very, very complex model. Um, this picture is just kind of a cross-section of showing all of the factors that uh, scientists have to look at when they're making a climate model. As you can see, there there's there's so many things to worry about. It's it's really really difficult to get an actual accurate model. And then when you do, it's really hard to find the processing power in order to uh, effectively look at look at some kind of, kinds of climate change. So I'll actually be covering that in my next video. But um, yeah, so these are my references. Um, and you know, thank you for watching. So uh, I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.